In this video, we'll go over the Vivado design flow. So let's first create a project. You can either create a project by clicking the Create Project here or from File, Project New. So we're going to go ahead and create a project. We'll hit Next. And then here we can give a name for our project. I'm going to go ahead and call this Lab 0A. And then we can give a project location. We can navigate to it here by clicking the dot. I've already created a folder, actually the CPE-133 on my desktop. But for the lab, I would recommend that you put your project files on your local U drive, the network drive, because the lab machines delete all the files when they reboot or overnight, uh, those files will be gone. So I would recommend uh, to put your files in the U drive. We're gonna create the project subdirectory and the final, the full path for our, where our project will be located is, is listed here at the bottom. Go ahead and hit next. We're going to select an RTL project. We'll hit next again. And then now we can add sources for our project, uh, or we can also do this after we've created the project, and that, that's what I'm going to do. At the bottom here, though, let's make sure that the target language is set to Verilog, and also the simulator is set, language is set to Verilog. We'll hit next. Again, we can add constraints at this point, or we can also add them later. I'll hit next. And now we're going to select the particular part number for the FPGA that we're using. So up for the final process and the design flow, when we're actually building the bitstream that goes on to the board, this will be important. So our particular board that we're using, the part number is XC7A35PCPG236-1. So I'll go ahead and select that one. We'll hit next. And now we can finish. And now Vivado will start creating our project and those local, local files. So as this is created now, we're going to see in the top left-hand corner here is our sources. And right now I don't I haven't added any sources yet. But if I when I add the sources, there'll be the design sources here, our barrel log files, uh, our constraints, and then our simulation sources, which will also be in barrel log. So let's go ahead and first. Uh, add our constraint files. So I'm gonna, you can either click on add sources over here on the left, or we could right click on constraints and also add sources. I'm gonna add or create the constraints. So on PolyLearn, the constraint file is already posted. It's called basis3 underscore constraints dot xdc. So I've already downloaded that. I'm gonna select that one, hit OK, and then I'll hit finish. And now I have my constraint file which is important for the basis three board that we're using listed underneath here. So let's go ahead and add our simulation sources now. Again, on PolyLearn, you'll find a template for a test bench. So I'm gonna add or create simulation sources. And I've already downloaded this file, sim template.v, and okay. <clears throat> and then I will hit finish. And now I've added, I have the template file added for the simulation added to the project. So now let's go ahead and create our design source. So I'm going to go ahead and add source, add or create. In this case, I don't have a file, so I'm going ahead and create this file. And I'm going to create my sandwich module. Go ahead and hit finish. And then a window pops up and I can go ahead and either uh, to find the inputs and outputs at this window, or I can go ahead and type them myself manually. If I want to, I can do it here. So I'm going to say my inputs are bacon, ham, and salami. And my output is B. Here I can also define buses or uh, vectors if there's multiple bits for each input. Right now these will just be single binary inputs and outputs. I'll hit OK. Morado is now going to create our design source and now we see it's here. So I'm going to go ahead and put my name at the beginning of the comments. And also put <clears throat> a short description here. So this is I have a zero. scroll down, I see I have my uh, module here, which is a dummy component. I can go ahead and I can add the logic that we previously calculated for this sandwich module. So I'm going to assign to V. Okay, so we have 
not bacon and not ham and salami or Okay, now that we have our module, uh, sometimes the Vavada will go ahead and, and do some pre-synthesis before we save the file, and if there's an error or a syntax error, we'll have a little red squiggle and a squiggly logo underneath that we can move our cursor over to highlight and try to identify what the problem is, but it's always a good idea to save the file first and then do a synthesis. So if I hit Control S or I can go ahead and save, the file will go ahead and be saved over here, uh, and then... <clears throat> So now I can hit run synthesis, and let's say, for example, I had an error here, so I have a syntax error, I forgot my semicolon. When I hit run synthesis, it's going to go ahead and check the syntax, run the synthesis, and generate a net list. So I'll go ahead and hit OK to run the synthesis. And we see that the synthesis failed, so I'll hit OK, and down here at the bottom we can see our messages. Uh, this is a good first place to come to when we're looking for information, especially the, the red errors and the, and the warnings. We can also dig into the tickle council, the TCL council to get more information, and also the log. So well, let's start first with the messages. So I can see right away that I see syntax error near end of module in my sandwich.v file in line 33. Okay, so it's very close actually to where I forgot my semicolon. So let's go ahead and add that back in. I'm going to hit control S and then resynthesize. Okay, so my synthesis is still running. I can see up here in the top right side of the window. Okay, so our synthesis uh, finished successfully. So we can now run implementation, but I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel for now because now what I'd like to do is run our simulation. For our simulation, though, we're going to need to change our template file a little bit here, though. So I'm going to come back over here. And I want the device under test or the DUT that I want to, or to simulate as the sandwich module. So I'm going to change this to the same name of the module that I defined in my design source. And the sandwich module, if I come back over here, had three inputs in my output, bacon, ham, salami, and V. So I'll come back to the simulation. And we have bacon, ham, salami. So I'm going to change the first part of these names for the port names. So in this case, this is bacon, ham, and salami. And then add those to these internal variables, uh, registers, and wires. And also change these. Bacon, ham, salami, bacon, ham, salami. Okay, so now we can go ahead and simulate our design. So come over here and do run simulation, run behavior simulation. Oh, and I get an error in the simulation. And I have a typo in how I spell sandwich. There we go, sandwich. Try that again. Okay, so now our simulation ran, and we come over here to the right window, and I see I have a timing diagram. I can add, whatever from whatever module I have, I can click on it, and I can go ahead and add in signals that I want. Bacon, ham, salami, for example, and I can drag or delete these from the timing diagram. And make this a little bit bigger. And we're going to look at zoom to fit, and we can see our cases here for inputs, bacon, ham, and salami, and the corresponding output when I have a valid sandwich. And we can see that the only case where I have a valid sandwich, but only one of them, in this, this second period right here, where I have ham being one. We can also change the colors here and also change the grouping if you want to display a vectors with hex or octal. Well, let's go ahead and close this for now. And now, I'm going to discard this. I don't need to keep the simulation results. And assuming everything looks good in the simulation, now let's go ahead and run the implementation to now put this on the board to test. So to do this, the first thing we're going to want to make sure of 
is checking our constraint file and connecting the inputs and outputs to, in this case, some of the switches and LEDs on our board. So for the switches, I'll connect Bacon, Ham, and Salami to three switches. So I'll come uncomment these first three switches, and then I'll go ahead and put in the names of the inputs for these switches. So Bacon, Ham, and Salami. And then for the output, I'll uncomment one of the LEDs and put in the output signal. and save that and now we're going to try to run the implementation it's going to tell us that the synthesis is out of date and it needs to relaunch and that's okay so we'll hit yes while we're waiting for this to finish running the implementation right now it's running rab design just point out at the bottom here after synthesis we're also going to get several synthesis reports as well as many other reports after different phases in, in the design flow, which are interesting to poke around with if you're waiting for things to finish synthesizing. Okay, so our implementation finished successfully. Now we can generate a bitstream, which is the final step before I'm gonna actually put this file, the bitstream onto our board. Okay, and so now our bitstream is successfully created. We can go to the hardware manager and we can auto connect once our, make sure our board is connected and the red LED is on, the board is turned on. And then for the final step, don't currently have a board connected, but what you'll see is a program device up here. You'll click on this and then you'll select the bitstream. You'll wanna make sure that the file path to the bitstream is the correct one that you'd like to load onto the board and then you can program the device and then check the behavior on the actual board.